Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as we take this $1 foam glider that we bought at Dollar Store and go from this to this. Let's get to it. We're back from the field. Spoiler alert, the test flight did not turn out well. Let's go through the build, the conversion of the glider. We'll see the flight and then we'll um, discuss some lessons learned at the end of the video. As I showed in the earlier picture, I was driving by Dollar Store the other day and I just saw this glider here for $1. They had a big box full of them. So I said, well, 22 inch wingspan, $1. Let's, let's give it a try, see if we can convert it to radio control flight. So this is what you get out of the box. It's a very lightweight foam. It's not the EPP foam. You can carve it, but it's, it's, it's got a good feel to it. The wing panels um, go in like this. And that's the glider. So we've got plenty of nose moment for balance purposes. Um, looking at this for radar control flight, you have to make some decisions on ailerons or rudder. I think because this is a relatively stable plane to begin with, the rudder will be fine. So it'll be three channels of control, electronic speed control for the throttle, rudder, and elevator. I think I'll just have uh, 1 16th inch balsa for the elevator and rudders. Uh, control rods will be on the outside and um, we'll glue everything in with the wings and we'll see how it's going to work. Uh, for the controls, I've got the um, Spectrum uh, AR410 uh, receiver, four channel receiver. I think that'll work fine. This is the supple motor details of it. It's the same one I had of the zero will be in the description. Uh, this should be fine for the for this model. Um, I'll use the high tech HS40 servos, two of those for the elevator and rudder, and just the Talon 15 electronic speed control. Again, all the details will be in the description. So next step is to start adding the motor, figuring out where we're going to put the components and see if we can get this thing airborne. It's always a good idea before any electronic installation to make sure everything hooks up, works properly. Things as simple as the brushless electric motor, making sure that the prop turns in the correct direction. I have changed my mind from an earlier video and I'm going to use the Park 250 Outrunner motor. This has the prop saver control, these two little screws, an elastic or, or rubber band arrangement goes around the prop. Uh, that works out fine. This little motor weighs half an ounce and it's suitable for sport models between 6 and 12 ounces, so there's going to be plenty of power for the glider. Note also that I took a plastic tube straw, put some uh, masking tape around here for a friction fit, and then with a little bit of epoxy, glued this tube onto the back end of the motor. So what will happen is, it's very easy to mount. I'll just drill a hole into the front, glue in the tube. I may put in a little bit of 1 16th inch plywood to provide a little bit more of an anchoring there. We'll see how that goes. So that should make the motor pretty easy to um, install. Again, the servos will be cut out of the wings. <clears throat> the receiver will be somewhere along the side. I'll have to figure that out. And then the battery to locate the center of gravity. So all the radar components weigh 2.3 ounces. The plane weighs an ounce. So we should get a nice little lightweight model. <clears throat> we'll put it all together. Plenty of power and we'll see how it flies. This is the box for the Park 250 out, uh, brushless outrunner motor. <clears throat> a very compact and powerful little motor. I install it on the red plastic straw. Now, this is view of the leading edge of the wing. It's just a flat leading edge which is really not suitable. You can see the beginnings of a sanding of the leading edge and here's a further sanding trying to make a little bit more of an airfoil shape for this wing. As always, the concerns are the plane is getting heavy and there's really not a lot of wing area on this model. I've cut off the front of the nose section, put on a 1 16th inch ply reinforcement that'll help hold the motor in place. And here the motor is, you can see the screws for the band hold on the prop, and that is epoxied. <clears throat> Make sure when you glue it in, you have the proper right and down thrust. This is the tail surfaces, uh, or the tail section. I have to cut away the top of the rudder so the elevator can go up on that. And using some 3 16 inch foam board, I have an elevator and a rudder put in place on the tail assembly. I just use clear plastic tape for the hinges. 
As I mentioned earlier, I was just concerned the wings weren't big enough, so I just decided to take some 3 16 inch foam board and add some more surface area to the wings. Just hot glued it to the rear edge. There's no aileron, so it's just a matter of putting it in place, no control surfaces. So see if this will help to add a little bit more area to the wing. These are the initial cutouts for the receiver and the, um, the battery, and then with the uh, servos put into the wing for the rudder and the um, elevator. I used some uh, plastic, uh, some colored packing tape for some color onto the bottom. We're making good progress on the uh, glider conversion. You saw the previous videos. So this is where we are right now. Uh, the wings are put in place. I added about a one inch thick of the um, 3 16 inch foam to just make the wing a little bit bigger. So it looked like a fairly small wing, especially with the equipment I'm putting on. <clears throat> we cut holes in the wings for the servos. I used some hot glue to keep those in place. They stick out um, underneath the wings, as you can see here. And so tomorrow I'll just put straight control rod runs to the elevator and rudder to get those hooked up. I have a cutout for the um, electronic speed control and the receiver. I'll hot glue those in place. And then once everything's fixed with the propeller on, I will put the battery somewhere at the top to achieve a center gravity, about 25% of the way back on the wing. And then we should be ready to give it a test flight. So that's where we are right now. I think it's coming out pretty good and more to follow. Here's a view of the pretty much finished model. Uh, popsicle sticks for the control horns on the rudder and elevator and the uh, colored packing tape uh, for some decoration. A little bit of silver foil for the cockpit. The motor's in place. You can see the bands holding on the 5x3 prop. And again, the ESC and the receiver in those little cutouts on the side of the fuselage. I finished the conversion of this $1 glider to a uh, three-channel radio control flight. The uh, weight with the battery came in at four and a half ounces. And that's about as much as you want. This is not a very large model of the wingspan, even though I helped by adding a little bit of area to the wing. I knew with this long nose moment, I wasn't going to have any problem with it being uh, tail heavy, which is typically the case, but I didn't quite keep up with the weight I was adding with the speed controller, or the receiver, or the motor up front. So to make things work out, the little battery here, I'm putting way back here to achieve the proper center of gravity. Uh, were I to do this again, clearly you want the receiver further back. I think even you could put a lot of the components um, underneath along here, uh, just but further back towards the back. So it's just a lesson learned. That's why we do these things for a prototype at first time. But um, the tape holds some of the uh, wires in place. I use some hot glue for the receiver. Now the tape is holding the electronic speed control. You can see the little prop saver on the five by three propeller on the Park 250 motor. Again, all specifics are in the um, description, the plywood firewall. The servo arms here with the mini keepers. <clears throat> the, the runs are, are short enough. I don't think I need an intermediate um, device to keep it from flexing. I think this is okay. And I am going to go for maximum throw on this just because I think this will be best using popsicle sticks for the control horns. So let's take a quick look. We'll plug it in and then prepare for our flight at the field once <coughs> weather allows. And the one thing I did for the battery here, I did have a Velcro uh, patch to hold it on plus a little dowel with a rubber band just so you don't lose that battery. So here's up elevator, down elevator, and then the rudder. And hopefully that'll be enough. I'd rather have a little bit extra than not enough on this one. And then the motor will head away from us. So again, all kinds of power from the Park 250 motor. So this is the plane, all set to fly, balances out. Don't have to worry about warps. Everything's glued in. Next step is uh, go to the field and see if we can get it in the air. So at the field, it looks like a very nice day. We will see if we can get this dollar glider up and flying.
So, uh, wish me luck. All right, here we go. So here's the first of the two test flights, the hand launch. It sort of maybe kind of flies and immediately flips over and crashes. The same flight in slow motion. Got a good hand launch. I think I probably need a little bit more power on this, but it's flying okay, and there just wasn't any lateral control and pitched over. On a second day, I tried a second flight. That one didn't go much better. Again, in slow motion. There's times you just have to cut your losses. For whatever reason, I think the plane is just too heavy for the equipment. Uh, the wings is just not going to be a good flyer. So this uh, test flight ended in complete disaster. I, I kind of half expected something like that to happen. I like converting these foam gliders. This one is just too small for the amount of weight that's put onto the equipment. Um, possibly with the ultra micro equipment, you could get away with it. But I think overall, you're going to get a better flying experience with a glider that's just a little bit bigger, uh, more wingspan. I'm going to use a minimum of three feet if I see any more foam gliders on sale. So it's not a lot of work to do the conversion. It was fun to, to experiment with all the stuff. You just need a bigger glider. I think there's merit. And so what happened in this flight, I have no idea. It crashed so quickly, it was never even under control. We're just going to accept that this didn't work out and move on to future projects. Good luck with anything you may try.